You guys had a nice little break from CKLA yesterday. Today we're gonna keep going. We're gonna actually read the second part of our Native Americans of the Southwest. So here's part two. Drought and confrontation with other Native people and with European explorers certainly helped to bring much change to the ancestral Pueblo settlements that had developed slowly over thousands of years in the American Southwest. The ancestral Pueblo had developed a way of life that was heavily influenced by the climate and the environment in which they lived. But this is not the end of the Pueblo story. Archaeologists believe that it is probable that the ancestral Pueblo journeyed to other areas in the region in search of water supplies needed to maintain their crops, hoping for a more peaceful way of life. It is not known for certain why the ancestral Pueblo left their former homes, but it is known for certain that they did leave and journey to other regions. They began to settle in areas around the Rio Grande River that are now northern New Mexico, northern Arizona, and central Utah, as well as southern Colorado. And so, once again, the native people of the Southwest learned how to settle and adapt to their immediate environment, and their culture continued to grow and change. Each year, snow fell, as it still does, on the mountaintops. Rain also fell into rivers and streams, and it flowed through the valleys of the lands that these native people occupied. However, in arid areas, there was never enough water and surviving in such places was a never ending struggle. Despite such struggles, native groups continued to develop new and ingenious ways to manage their most precious resource, water. Over time, ancestral Pueblo adopted some new customs and beliefs and they continued to practice their traditional ways. Out of this grew new customs, languages, religions, and forms of government. These new cultural practices developed in the deserts, mountains, and valleys of the southwest region. Many tribes came into existence as a result of their ancestors' incredible journey across thousands of years and countless miles. Two of these tribes are the Hopi and the Zuni. These tribes with a shared history are called the Pueblo Indians. The Hopi, one such tribe born of this journey, is the group we are going to focus on today. The word Hopi means peaceful or wise. The Hopi are descendants of the ancestral Pueblo, but interestingly, their language is not the same. The Hopi settled in an area that is now Arizona. They were organized into clans, with their mother's side of the family establishing the most important family connections. Like all native people, the Hopi relied on the environment for all of their needs. The Hopi grew beans, squash, melons, pumpkins, and other types of gourds, cotton, and corn. Corn was their most important crop, and they learned how to grow several different kinds. Because of the dry conditions, they learned how to plant the corn deep into the ground. There, the corn crop could reach underground water sources and also be protected from the arid conditions above. Also, the Hopi would plant their crops at the bottom of the mesas, so that after it rained, the water would run down into their fields and water their crops. The Hopi lived in houses made of stone and wooden beams. They did not use adobe clay to build houses as their ancestors did. They entered their house through a ceiling using a ladder. Because of the environment in which they lived, they ate very little meat. But the Hopi women who ran the household knew many different ways to cook corn. Hopi people wove cloths for clothing and blankets and made moccasins, belts, basket, pottery, and jewelry. The Hopi were thought to be very peaceful people. Like many other native people and many people today, 
conflict. However, they felt conflict with others. The same way they chose to show this was by giving the silent treatment or the cold shoulder. The Hopi were also very spiritual. They believed that people were created inside the earth and emerged onto the surface through an opening. The Hopi called the small part of the surface, they called that the Sipapu. They practiced what they called the Hopi way. They believed they should be kind to each other and thoughtful towards their environment. Central to Hopi's beliefs were ancestral be beings called Kachinas. These Kachinas were thought to be the spirits of animals, natural elements such as wind and rain, ancestors who left the spirit world for six months each year to dwell among living or deities. The Hopi believed that the Kachinas would visit the world each year around the same time of the winter solstice and would stay until the time of the summer solstice, about six months. The Hopi believed they needed the most health in the Kachina spirit during this time because it is the harshest, coldest time of year. They could not grow crops, and it would be more difficult to find animals to hunt. The number of spirits believed to visit varied from community to community. The Hopi believed that Kachinas might, for example, help bring forth rain, so that the earth and the crops would continue to thrive, or that Kachinas might provide assistance in time of sickness and disease. In essence, the Hopi believed that in order to survive, they had to ask for help from the spirits that controlled every aspect of their world. The Hopi held festivals and ceremonies throughout the year, the most important of which were held during the time the Hopi believed that spirits of the dead dwelt among the living. Ceremonial dances were performed by male members of the tribe. The men wore a variety of masks and special clothing to represent different kachinas. During the ceremonial dances, they asked the gods to bring forth the rains to make the crops grow. The Hopi believed that during these ceremonial dances, each man would transform into the spirit he was representing. Many of these ceremonies were held in the plazas, where some were held in the kivas. This was a tradition that had begun with the ancestral Pueblo. Kachina dolls were very important too. They were hand carved from cottonwood roots by men and presented to boys and girls. Each doll represented a particular spirit. The doll's face revealed what spirit it was. Kachina dolls were also honored and revered as the bringers of rain. For the people in such a dry reason, region, rain meant life. The Hopi still inhabit the southwest region of North America and live throughout the United States and around the world. Some live without adhering to or being devoted to traditional ways, whereas others practice a Hopi way seek the aid of Kachinas and live much the same way their ancestors did, keeping these traditions. The Hopi, along with the Zuni and many other Native American groups, continue to cherish and manage the lands that they lived on for hundreds of years as their tribal journey continues. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great night. <laughs>